Jason Walker again over here, Jay Walker Buzz. We're at the Mar Invitational. Well, it done. But <laughs> but vibes today. I met some great people. And you know, earlier on we spoke about Asia Williams. Well, Asia Williams led me to somebody who I haven't interviewed in. So <laughs> Park. Either way, <laughs> long time ago. A legend. A man who represented the Caribbean very well. Like you know, there was a time when we weren't getting that many medals. And when I say we, I don't just mean Jamaica. I mean the whole Caribbean. <laughs> we weren't getting that many medals. He was one of the few that were. And he's gone on to keep on representing us by coaching and commentating on the biggest platforms. And I love when he's on because he brings the Caribbean perspective, which is 99% of the time out of the mix. So you should already know I'm talking about. The NBC commentator. The boy who made Trinidad to make a proud, sorry. The man who made Trinidad to make a proud <laughs> and lifts up the Caribbean. Mr. Atto. Mr. Atto. Bolden! Yeah, crowd, crowd. Lo <laughs> lovely introduction. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, you have to big up who's for big up. So, Atto, you're not just here from a media perspective. You're here at the Miramar Invitational in what capacity? Well, this spot that you're standing on right here. When this was dirt, uh, Vernon, uh, Vernon Hargrave, who at the time was the city manager, brought me here and he said, Can you see a meet here? Can you see a track here? Can you see people running here? And I said, Absolutely. And I know the community that I live in now. I live in this community. Lots of Jamaicans, lots of Trinidad, lots of people from the Caribbean. We love track and field. We need to have a track here. So it's one thing to have a track. But when we built the track and I helped to design the track and, and made sure that it was one of the fastest in, in the world and certainly in, in, in the southeast. United States, it was then the question of we need to have a meet here mm. because we're trying to build the next generation of track and field fans. So when, when these kids come here and they see a Sharika Jackson, they see a Shakari Richardson, they see Christian Coleman, they see whoever, these are people who they're used to seeing on TV at Worlds and at Olympics. So it's a right. very important thing. So this is now the third edition that has happened here of the Miramar Invitational. We're very proud. It's we're not anywhere close to where we think it should be, mm -hmm. but we think that next year we're going to take a really big step up in terms of class. We're already a, a world uh, tour continental um, silver meet, but we are very excited. And we have a city and a mayor of people who get it. They understand why you want to have this kind of meet here in April. And the athletes love it because the track is brand new and it's fast. Well, that, that's because the mayor wanted to himself be an Olympian. So that's I, right. Just, that's right. Shout out to Mayor you, you think I didn't see him. <laughs> that being said, um, what do you think it would take and how could the community support to get it to the level that you wanted to get to? Um, I think we're going to have to have some bigger broadcast partners. We were very close to being on NBC, on Peacock, um, this year. But we have an issue with some of our lines of sight because we, don't, we have this, this covering here that puts a lot of blockage mm. um, that we're going to get rid of by next year. That's, that's, a big, that's a big part of it. We had headwinds today. We can't control that, but that was, that was a little unfortunate. But the truth is, it's, it's kind of like Field of Dreams. If you build, build it, it they, they will, will come. come. We wow. have built this place. Shakari Richardson put this place on the map because she's run 10-7, 10-5 windy on this track uh, two years in a row. She didn't run this year, but she was here signing autographs. So it's, it's important to continue to have the meet because athletes are always looking for good weather, fast tracks early in the season. We have both. And it helps to have an audience that actually understands and values as you. And, and you have a 80% Jamaican audience. Everybody is here in the gold, green, and black. So that, that helps, that, that counts for something when, I mean, I'm, I'm watching from the booth today as the, the long jump happens, and when Tajay Gale lands in the pit, yeah, and you're right. like, wow, that's, that's not something you see at every meet in April. Him and Michael Johnson always talk about crowds that know it and appreciate it. So, so, so this is actually an opportunity to create that dream. Now, let, 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 let's step back, um, step back a little bit. Atto, um, you just mentioned um, NBC. Mm -hmm. Of course, you you are the one. You you are our pipeline in there. You you and Sonia because you know, she's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> you you get, Sonia. Um, our, our Sonia Richard Ross for those who are wondering came from Jamaica but ran for the U.S. Yes, and tell her we hold it against her, but we appreciate her greatness. That being said, what is it like for the you know well she ran for the U.S.A. So that's kind of different. But the two of you are Caribbean individuals being commentators in a realm 
where you don't see Caribbean commentators at all. Tell us a bit about that, how you, how you got there. I mean, that must have been crazy work. I mean, it don't matter that you're a legend. You are doing something that's never been done before. How did you, how, you know, tell us about that. You know, I would love to say that I feel like I have brought a Caribbean perspective to my broadcasting. Yes, you have. Nothing could be further from the truth. Let me tell you what I did. If you go back and you, you, you look, my intro, right? you listen just, to me. No, listen, no, I want, I, want, I want people to understand this very clearly. If you go back and you look at how NBC broadcast before I got in the booth, the focus was sort of America first and everything else after. Facts. I see that all over the world. You go to Australia, they focus on the Australians and everybody else after. What I tried to do when I got in there, I am still on an American network, but here's what I tried to do. There is no way that if I am broadcasting a race and the favorite is Jamaican and maybe they don't have somebody else from the U.S. who's going to be competitive, that I'm going to focus on the American when I know very well he or she doesn't have a chance to win. So what I try to do is let the race dictate who you should focus on. You see what I'm saying? It just so happens that if you do that and if you're fair across the board, then, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll lead with Julian Alfred. We'll lead with a Nigerian hurdler. We'll lead with an American hurdle because now you're just you're not being a slave to your nationality you're being a slave to the sport and that to me is better because the people at home already know it's like look I'm tuning into this race I know who I think is gonna win I know who I think is gonna place if you're mentioning people who we both know is not going to be on that podium then you're doing your 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 audience a disservice that's the change People see it as, oh, well, you know, Atto is there and Sanya is there and they're going to focus on the Caribbean. No, the Caribbean is good enough where we have enough stars from the Caribbean and from the rest of the world where they should be highlighted. The difference is that now you're not being a slave to red, white, and blue because you're on an American network. That's the difference. So, here, so, so, so all I will say is the Caribbean perspective, you may have come from it just be to be a slave to the sport. Mm -hmm. But a Caribbean perspective still comes, and I'll tell you why. Yes. Before the race is even run, you're talking about how somebody did in Boys and Girls Champs and Curriculum. Of games. course, yes. Well, I, I, and, and well, nobody else is saying that. Well, I am, you have, to, you have to remember too, that I am a fan of the sport first. Facts. A diehard, diehard fan of the sport. So I want to present our sport to the world the way I would want it presented to me. So, yes, I am going to mention, yes, you may not know who this person Boom. is, but Tia Clayton has been tearing up champs for her entire junior career, and now she's made the transition. You may not know who so-and-so X is, but trust me, as a fan, I've been following, and I think this is somebody who you should be focusing on because it's somebody who has been running very, very well for the last five years. He or she has just arrived on the scene, but this is a name to watch. And that's why I call it Caribbean Perspective. That's yes, what absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, so I hear you. Absolutely. All right, so, so, so Atto, um, this is an Olympic year. Um, one of the reasons I even got called is because it's an Olympic year. Yes. You know, in terms of the Caribbean people for right now, what are you, what are you thinking? Who, how do we look? You know, Shelley's swan song, Sharika's coming, Elena's coming. Well, we, we, have, to, we, have, to, we have to do trials, obviously. <laughs> but, yes. but, you know, pretty much. What, what, what's your perspective? Um, I think you look at Shakari, she's the youngest of all of those names that you called. Uh, you look at Julian Alfred, who's even younger. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you're going to have a podium in Paris without those two at least having a say. Mm. But, of course, you look at Jamaica and you go, wow. The last three medalists in the 100 are all going to line up at the Jamaican trials. Elaine, Shelly Ann, and of course, Sharika. If I fell asleep, if I fell asleep for a year and I woke up and you said Sharika had won the 100 and the 200 in Paris, would that surprise anybody? No. She was second. She was close last year. So I think that's what adds to the intrigue. Yes, Shakari is probably the favorite. Yes. But favorite don't matter. It's the Olympic year. Ask Marcel Jacobs in mm. the 100 in, in, in Tokyo. So mm -hmm. That's why people who love the sport like yourself and me, we get so excited for the Olympic Games. Because, yes, you have who you think is going to win. Or maybe who you want to win. That doesn't matter when the, the final goes off. Facts. And um, now, we, we spoke about Julian, uh, Julian Afo, which We spoke about Shakari. We spoke about, uh, we spoke about Sharika. Um, who are some names that we might not be hearing from the Caribbean? 
that you think could explode? Listen, we just saw um, Shadi Williams, who has been setting personal best already this season at 200. Maybe she improves on those bronzes that she's been winning in the last two world, uh, world championships. Maybe it is that somebody like uh, somebody that, that, that shows up from the Caribbean. Look, last year I was talking about Tobogo and people were like, who? <laughs> you sure you're not talking about your country? <laughs> right. <laughs> last year was, there's all, I was, I mean, I got the 100 meter winner wrong, I will admit. I did not see Noah figuring it out the way right, he did. Right. He did. And did he figure it but out? But I was, I, w I mean, we have it on tape. You, you, I was on the NBC preview saying, Zarnell Hughes, Tobogo. I was also saying Fred Curley. Yes. Tobogo and Donnell Hughes were on the podium. Fast. Fred Curley didn't even make the final. So again, Fast. it's the intrigue of the Olympic year. I, I wish I knew any, everybody that, that could potentially be on the podium. I have a sense of who I think is going to be on the podium. I think it's going to be two Jamaicans and Shakari. And if not two argue. Jamaicans and Shakari, one Jamaican, Julian Alfred, and Shakari. All right, we're going to work on the two Jamaicans. You're going to work on the tree drumming because of that. <laughs> anyway, Homer. That being said, um, going back now, you know, I just asked Fuchsia, now going back. Um, in the 40s and 50s, look it up, there were Caribbean medals. Yes. From, uh, this is well, a, Jamaican going, medals. I'm going to the men's side. No, wasn't there another Caribbean country, but they were on the British, they were on the British yeah, team? Yeah, it was a, it was a different, different landscape back then, so, yes. So, so, so what I'm saying, when I say Caribbean, no, I'm even talking to those who ran for Britain and Oh, US. absolutely. I mean, you had McDonald Bailey, who was exactly. Trini, but he was running for, you know, the British, and there's the British Canada Empire. Well, and there's also Canada, right. So, um, 40s, 50s, 70s, we saw strong um, Caribbean presence. Yes. In 70s, that kind of dropped off a bit. The end of the 70s. A little bit, because that's pre-Don Quarry. Right. Of course, Hazley Crawford wins in 76 from Trinidad and Tobago, first man from the Caribbean. Facts. Silvio Leonard from Cuba is, a, is in that era as well. But yeah, the, the, look. Hey, here, here's what I wanted yes. to bring up. In, in the 90s, we saw a strong female presence. Oh, yes. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and it seemed to hold all the way through till now. Certainly on the women's side. The Jamaican <laughs> women have been holding down the fort for the entire Caribbean since the days of Merlin Adi. 2006, I think it's the World Championship. I looked at the, uh, the last heat before the finals. Mm -hmm. And 80% of the women were from the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I remember looking at them, I'm like, something is happening here. For somebody who's in the, in the sport, do you have any... Explanation, because that, that was right before 2008 Olympics, which yeah. was the explosion of, of, of all these things. But I remember in 2006 World Championship, 80% were women. I mean, were Caribbean women and Caribbean men. That is gonna that is gonna continue. That is gonna continue. Now, Africa has stepped up. Yes, that's why you have a a Talu and some of the other ones. Um, on the men's side, I think there's immense parity. That's why on the podium last year you have USA. Great Britain and um, oh, Botswana. Botswana, right? On the women's side, it's kind of been a lot of Jamaica versus the USA. When a, when when an American doesn't win, Carmelita Jeter, Lauren right. Williams, then it's Elaine. Of course, it's Shelly and her five. Yes. So to me, the I don't I don't expect that to change. Mm. And I mean, look, I, I just gave you my prediction for for the Paris podium. I have an American, a Jamaican, and a Saint Lucian. Right. Depending on on what day I wake up. Right. The men, is, it, it's, a, it's a little wider of a pool. It seems like there's more chance for somebody who is not USA or Jamaica or the Caribbean mm. to get on that podium. Okay. Uh, I can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, people, for the casuals who don't normally see track, the fact that small countries are even in the conversation yeah, small, yeah. Makes, makes no sense. Because like any sport, once you get to an international le level, Resources are important. And all of a sudden, you're competing against United States, Britain, Canada, China, Germany, Russia, which resources light years ahead of us, and we're still competing. So that being said, Otto, long term, where do you see us, the Caribbean, African nations, and so on? It's only going to get better. Marie Jose Talou trains in Los Angeles, where Brianna Williams is now, with John Smith, one of the best coaches in the world. Mm. Where is Julian Alfred? Training with Dina Asher Smith of the UK. Wow. In Texas with a Haitian guy. Wow. <laughs> so it, 
the, it, it has changed now. HSI changed that. MVP changed that. Racers changed that. Because now you have these super groups competing and training together. Wow, right. So it doesn't matter what country you're from anymore. You take the talent, you put it to be sharpened by the iron in their group. Yes. With a good, with a good coach. Look at Shade Williams. You think yeah. Shade Williams would, would be where she is training in Barbados against nobody? No. Right. She goes to MVP. She's creating also, I continues to create all sorts of history for Barbados. So the, it's not like it was before where everybody was kind of training at home or maybe they were at, at an NCAA school where they were the star. But there really wasn't anybody else to push them. Now you have these super groups and everybody's kind of sharpening each other. And that's why you're seeing the results. The, the flags almost don't matter. I mean, we're all happy for Julian because there are going to be generations of women from St. Lucia who go, I, I, wanted to be I am running because I wanted to be like Julian Alford. There you go. I saw her win a medal in Paris. I saw her win World Indoors um, in Glasgow. It's, it's a different time now. The world is a lot smaller, even in the track and field world now. And the Caribbean, smaller than that. Yeah. That being said, so Atto, you know, first of all, tell us a little bit about what it was like coaching the Williams, Brianna and Asia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, there's no way you could have grown up in Miramar and not known about Brianna. Her mother approached me very early to coach her, but I, I never I never saw myself as no coach. Mm. And then I think I saw some athletes in this area and I thought they're wasting a lot of these coaches are wasting the talent and I got involved and next thing you know I was coaching Kalifa St. Port from Trinidad and Tobago and then I was coaching Brianna. Brianna literally has done things that nobody did had done at the time right she has the age group world record the under 20 yep um double brianna ran 10 94 sick, sick, sick as a dog on the regular shoes not on these fancy shoes that they have now that it's giving you almost a tenth of a second before um, by right and, and 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 to anybody who feels like oh brianna fell off imagine what your life would be like if at 19 years old you had an olympic gold medal a <laughs> million dollars in the bank and you had done and you had and you had everything you had ever wanted to buy so Brianna did have a couple years of reflection she is now out with my former coach John Smith and I talked to him last night I've known John Smith for almost 30 years yes for sorry for 32 years yes I have never heard John Smith more effusive with praise about a young athlete ah. so when John says to me you've done a good job <laughs> and I'm gonna take it from here I'm like this is exactly what I want. I was talking to Stephen Francis at World Juniors in, to, in, uh, in, in 2018 because I always knew I can't coach Brianna to where she needs to go. I'm yeah. doing it now. I'm going to hand this off to somebody. I think Brianna's in great hands. So coaching those two, I think I became a better broadcaster. I certainly mm. understood my sport more. And it reminds me how hard this sport is. And I carry that into each broadcast. It's like, yeah, it's easy to sit on your couch and talk about who didn't run this and who didn't run that. This stuff is hard. Yes. And people forget it sometimes. They're like, ah, oh, why she didn't run? It's like, it is difficult. And this is, and not only that, this ain't the, the, the NFL. You are running, you're competing against the world. Every year there's going to be somebody from the back of somewhere who wants a spot on that podium. It's what makes our sport beautiful and unique. I think Bomani Jones said it best. The reason he says that Usain Bolt is the greatest athlete that's ever lived is because everybody runs. Everybody <laughs> sends somebody for the 100 meter rounds, right? Everybody runs. Absolutely. And that man ran the fastest time of any human that's being right. in Asia, right? That's right. Um, tell her a little bit about Asia Williams. Asia came from Canada. And I. Jamaican parents. Yes, Jamaican, Jamaican Canadian. <laughs> um, she was out in Western, out in BC, in, in British Columbia. And her mother sort of shadowed Brianna and she, she essentially contacted me and said, if you can do half of what you did for Brianna, right. for my daughter, I am packing up my life and moving to Florida. <laughs> Excuse me. And she did that. Asia had two years under me. She was making real progress. But then once Brianna decided that, Brianna and I decided mutually that she was getting a little too comfortable here and her results were not continuing right. in the direction that we wanted. She went to Jamaica for two years and then I said, look, I have to get back to the other things that I wanted to do. I was about to turn 50. I had a whole bunch of other things I wanted to Don't do. Don't tell people that you look like 25. Thank you. <laughs> I, I had a whole bunch of other things I wanted to do. So I told Asia, look, you're going to have to 
I, I can't coach you anymore, but I will still be involved in your career. And we're now talking about how I can help her now that, now that she's in high school. So, look, the, the coaching thing, I, that will, that's never going to be top of my resume, but I still enjoy it, and I still enjoy seeing young people who are talented and driven achieve their dreams. Now, in terms of your broadcasting career, what do you see long-term for you? Well, this is my 20th year now. Um, I've now been doing this twice as long as I was a, as an athlete. I, I had said that maybe after, um, after Los Angeles, I want to hang it up because that would be, that'd be another four years. But my mother, my Jamaican mother tells me, yeah, right. You're going to sit down at home and watch somebody call the Olympics worse than you. That's never going to happen. So my mother has no faith that I'm going to walk away. But I will say Thank this. Thank you, mommy. I will say this. When I retired from track and field at 30, everybody said, ah, that's too early. You're going to come back. I never came back. Once I decide I'm done, I'm done. So we'll see. After one more Olympics, that will be my sixth, I think. Then we'll, we'll, I'll reassess because I, I, I don't want to do this forever. And I have a lot of exciting things in Hollywood. Um, I, oh. I, I'm part of a group that has you know, test football. I have about 75 clients in the NFL. Oh. I, I still get to coach. I just i am not coaching sprinters. So I have other things that interest me. And I've always been somebody who, when I feel like I have done all I can do in, in one field, I move on. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. You don't want to be stagnant. No, no, no. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want the horn. You, you know, remember Showtime at the Apollo? Yes. You don't want the hook coming for people to go, oh, okay, <laughs> he, he was great 10 years ago. He was decent two years ago, and, and now he sucks. Get off the stage before somebody comes for you. Well, clearly the clown is not going to come for him right in time <laughs> soon. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the legend, the one and only Otto, who several times beat the Jamaican runner. So, you know, I was cussing him at that point. <laughs> but... We have to respect greatness. Love the fact that he has done what he's doing. He's continuing to do. And all them big media houses that never came through, you missed out. I had no problem with the line of vision. We were doing well today. Just saying. You know, you might want to check us out next year. The Miramar Invitational, the legend Otto Bolton. Yo, big respect, sir. Thank you. Jay Walker. Jay Walker Buzz.